Welcome to our video connecting percent growth with algebra. This is moving past what we talked about in the last video, which was just dealing with basic percents in algebra. So, so let's say we have a typical percent growth problem, right? This means that we're going up, we're growing, right, by some percent. So where do we start? Well, let's start with something straightforward. Let's say you have some amount of something whether it's, it's debt or money or food, and, and it, this grows by some percent. How much do you have in the end? Well, let's just say that, that I have, I don't know, I'm thinking of food right now, um, I don't know, 146 pounds of pasta, right? You have lots of pasta, quite a, quite a bit, actually. And... Um, Right, You're, this is your store of pasta right now. By the end of the year, right, you've accumulated more pasta. Let's say the amount of pasta you had has grown by ten percent. Well, how much pasta do you have then? Well, then let's assume, as a second part, if you start with the same amount, what? How much would you have? If your pasta didn't grow by 10%, what if it grew by 200%? What would that mean? So we'll look at these two examples. Case one, well, in case one right here, this is called case one, your pasta grows by 10%. Here, it grows by 200. How do we calculate this and what does this mean? Let's start with 10%. If you have 146 pounds of pasta, we'll just write 146 over here. In order for the pasta to grow by 10%, this means a couple of things. First of all, we take this amount and multiply it by 10%, or 0.1. Well, that, that'll be 10% of the original, right? And then we're going to add the original to that. That's our new amount of pasta, the original and 10%. So what does that give us? Well, what's 10% of 146? Well, that's just 14.6. Just divide and you know multiply by 0.10. That's the same thing as dividing by 10. Divide by 10 is easy because you can move the decimal over. And that's all I did here. So really we have 14.6 plus 146. Okay, well 14.6, 146. Well 14 and 146, that's 160. And then 0.6 more is our total. So if your pasta amount grew by 10%. This is how much you would have, and that, that matches right here, right? That's this amount. And one thing you want to start thinking about is, could I have simplified this, right? Well, if you think about it, here you have your full amount of pasta. Here you have 10%. And notice, in terms of factoring, they both have 146 here. So we can combine these two in one step. If you think about this as 100% of your total, and here we're adding 10% of your total, that means this new number, which grew by 10%, is the sum of these two percents. Right? We have 100%, the full amount, and 10% more. So we could combine these two into one step, saying let's find 110% of, well, I'm writing backwards, I'm sorry, this, that's not going to help you. 110% of, or multiply, 146. And that's easy enough to do. To find 110%, that's really just 1.1. This is the 100% mark, and this is the 10% mark. Combine them to 1.1, 1 .1, right now, 10%, 100%, times 146. So you can combine these two things into one step. And that's something I might go into detail uh, about in later videos, or maybe in this one, about why that makes sense. But here, I want you to be aware that you know you're taking a percent of the original and adding it to it to find a new value, you can combine that into one step. Let's try another one. What if it grew by 200%? What does that mean? Well, since it grew by 200%, right? That doesn't, does that mean it doubles? Well, let's look at that. So you start off with 146 again. And what you add to that is 200%, right? 100% is one, so 200% is two. So you add to it twice the amount of pasta, because it's growing by that much. 
So it doesn't double. It grows by 200%. It grows by a doubling of the original amount. So what's that mean? Well, 2 times 146. I think 2 times 150 is 300. That's too large, right? 150 is not 146. In fact, it's 4 more than it. So we doubled 4 more than we had to twice. So I should take away 8 from 300. And we get oh, 292. And actually, let me write this, sorry. So we have 146, the original, plus 292. That's the amount of pasta I have. So the original plus a doubling. That's the growth here. So 100 and 200 is 300. 40 and 90 is 130. So we get, right, 300, 430. And then 2 is 8. So we have, we have 438 pounds of pasta. And here, how can we combine this? Well, this is actually kind of interesting because this brings into light what's happening here with the growth. Well, here, if we had twice the amount and the original, right, we had 100% and 200%. Well, that means we have now 300%. This is something to start thinking about. When you grow by 200%, you actually triple the original amount. So we could have done this in one step. We could have you know, taken 3 times 146 and gotten our answer right up here. And all this is, the reason this is happening is because we're able to combine these percents. Let's look at that from an algebraic standpoint. I want to get into it here and try to explain it. We have some original amount, x, right? And we're saying the original amount is x times 1, because 100% of that. And then we add some other percent of growth. In this case, it was 2. We're multiplying that by the same amount. So to simplify this matter, we can combine these like terms. Right? 1 plus 2 is just 3. This is equal to 3 times the original amount. In the first example, we had 100% plus 10% of the same number. So here we can add these like terms, and we get 1.1x. And in fact, you know, with a tax problem, and typically you'll encounter some kind of tax, right? When you have a tax, it's, it's taking the price you're paying and growing it by some amount. You have the original price of, of the item, 100% of your item, plus, let's say, about 8% tax, right, for New York's tax. Add these two up, you get 1.08. And often, if you see people calculating their tax, they'll take the percent and then add to the original. Why not do it all in one step? Multiply your original price by 108%, or 1.08, and combine it all together in one step. Um, but let's, let's, let's use this idea to keep going. Because another type of problem you might get with growth is you might know what your result is after a certain amount of growth, and you want to know what your original is. So let's say, right, we have a landfill. And, right, we're trying to calculate what's happening in the landfill. And what do we know? Well, we know that the amount uh, of garbage grew from last year by 40%. And now, after it's grown 40% after, we have some amount of garbage. Let's say... I don't know, uh, 418 tons of garbage. We want to know what was the original amount of garbage before this growth. So at the beginning of last year, when we measured last year, we had some amount. Now when we measure again, it's 40%, right? It grew by 40%. So um, what do we have, right? What was the original when we measured last year? How do we do this? Well, this is where algebra comes in handy, and, and it's a great tool, because this is actually quite difficult to do if you can't write the equation or see the connection here. Because what we have, of course, is that some original amount of garbage plus 40% of that original, right? Because we know it grew by some amount. Well, that's what we're doing all along. We're saying if we add these two, we, get, we now have 418 tons of garbage. So what was the original amount? Well, let's solve for x. Combine like terms here. The coefficient here is 1. It's 
of the original amount, that's the original amount of course, 100% of it, add this up, we get 1.4x equals 418. Okay, well, here to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.4, and I'll end up solving 418 divided by 1.4. And that will be the original amount of garbage. Let's solve that, 418 divided by 1.4, and there it is, about 298.571428, and then repeats, 5712.1285. Yeah, sorry, so 298.5714, and I think I missed the rest, 1428. Two eight. That's the repeating. There it is. Five seven one four two eight. Five seven one four two eight. So five seven one four two eight. And that means that was the original amount of garbage that you had last year. Now be very careful when you have something growing by a percent. Really make sure you verify your reasoning. Things aren't always going to work out as neatly as you might expect. Calculate what the original amount was. Don't just assume um, that you know what it was. Right? For example, if you knew it grew by 200% and they told you you now have this many tons of, of garbage, what was the original, don't just divide it in half, thinking that originally if, you, if it grew by 200% that you, you, can, you can go back to the original by cutting it back in half. We just went over that, right? In fact, you'd be cutting it in third to get the original. So you really want to be careful here. And in that way, you might discover some great and fun patterns uh, in dealing with percents. I just should also just finish by clarifying that growing by 200%, right, is different from saying your new amount, this might be the phrasing, is 200% of the original. So these are different. These are very different. On the left here, the growing by 200% is what we've been talking about on the original. On this one, we're saying, this next one, if you had 200% of the original, that might mean something different. Let's say you had something that was $150. Well, if this next price is 200% of the original, that means this new, new price is twice times 150, or 300. So this actually means, yeah, your numbers, numbers double the original because it's that percent of the original. So that, that phrasing is very different here. It's not talking about the growth or how much it has grown by. It's talking about how much larger your, or smaller your new number is in comparison with your original. So just be aware that that is something different than what we've been talking about here in this video. All right, hope